Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA, and here's another one that I say we've been waiting a while for, and we really have. So this is Aaron, you guys, where today's our first time actually meeting, and yeah, let's dig into your car. Cuda, obviously, what year? Mm -hmm. Barracuda, 73. This is your first car you've yeah. ever bought yourself yes, and owned yeah. and built and everything. First car owned and built. Crazy, man. And you said you were 29 years old when you bought it. I, I thought, yeah, yeah, I'm a huge car guy, so that was, that was rough, but I went to university at a city you, that was very compact and you didn't need a car to get around. And I was yeah. doing a lot of traveling and you know, was freelance and doing different things. And I yeah, started yeah. working for a production company in New Zealand and uh, in Wellington and had the kind of finances to, to fund the dream. And so I bought this, is, you know, for a first car, it's not bad. It didn't look anything like this when I bought it. Though. Was it was it a fairly clean car when you bought it? Uh, <laughs> no. No, no. It was, it was extremely rough. Knowing what I know now, I would never have bought that car. But I Got wouldn't it. know what I know now if I hadn't bought it. So. Yeah. The car was really rough. This was 2007, right before, right when they were going crazy, the values were skyrocketing. You yeah. Know, before yeah. the financial crash and everything. Yeah. And I was just sitting there thinking, I'm never going to be able to afford, you know, my dream muscle car or anything. I wanted a Barracuda, and then this thing turned up on Trade Me, the sort of the eBay for New Zealand, at a price I could afford yeah. for a reason. And you know, I flew to Auckland. It was about a nine hour drive from where I lived, and then bought the car and drove it back. And, you actually know, drove it back. Yeah, drove it back. Right. And, and it snowed, and heavy rain, and <laughs> windshield wiper broke off, and the <laughs> clutch was gone by the time I got back, and the shifter was all sloppy. And Wow. It was very rough. The car was super rough. Um, yeah. But I didn't know at that time how <laughs> how bad it would get, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it actually was surprisingly reliable though. I drove it around in that state. I had a buddy paint it matte black or satin black and I put black steelies on it and I put yellow Goodyear on the tires and did a few touches to the interior and intake and things like that. Yeah. And drove it around like that for about three years. Yeah. And it was surprisingly reliable. You, you know? said it was, a, originally it was a 318, yeah, 318 car, right? It was a, originally an automatic. It got converted to a four speed at some point in its life. Mm. A bit badly. And uh, <laughs> open diff. And uh, yeah, so good cruiser. Yeah. A really good car for road trips, which is what I did a lot of. I, yeah. I think I put about 15 to 20,000 miles on it in that state into the most remote parts of New Zealand. And yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. You can pop the hood, right? I can tell it's a full lift off, right? Nice. I knew you were going to do that. Yeah. Oh, you even put. Yeah. You it's seriously, got a... you got to be kidding me. So that, that compact city I lived in in New Zealand where I built this. Like notoriously windy city. So if you didn't have somewhere to put the hood, and you know, you can And that's it even down. foam you put here. Yeah, so you don't. So ah, nice. come on, that's yeah. pretty cool. Okay, so it's it's not the 318 anymore? No, 440 in there now. That nice. actually kickstarted this whole process, uh, this whole build. Like I said, it was a 318 small block open diff. So I'd found a guy selling us uh, 440, freshly built for his drag car. He'd never run it, it was freshly built. So I, I bought that and the plan was put it in the car for the summer. And do some proper burnouts. In preparation, I, I pulled the motor and everything and it <laughs> just started to find, you know, the deeper you went, the worse I got. Borrowed a little sandblaster and set up a little sandblasting booth in the little garage of the place I was renting in New Zealand and then just started to find horrific things. The chassis rail was completely broken in half. Pretty big accident in the past. Everything was twisted and bent. Everything had been massaged to fit. Tons of rust, tons of really shoddy rust repairs. Gotcha. Bad. Real bad. It turns out the whole car was covered in about half an inch of body filler and under spray. The further it got, the, the worse it got. Wow. And that's what kickstarted the whole build. It was supposed to be an engine in for summer for some burnouts and it turned into a six year bare chassis, removed all the sheet metal, replaced, you know, fixed all the rust. And, and you did it there. all yourself? Yeah, yeah, that's one way to learn. But the idea that just, just so like people that are watching understand your world has been in design. Yeah, I, I like making things though. I've always liked making things. I've always dreamed of working on cars. Yeah. To be honest, when I first bought the car, I assumed that having not a lot of hands-on experience, I'd be paying someone to do it. I'd be doing the design as a designer and yeah. I'd be having someone else do the work. But like I said, when I drove the car down from, from when I bought it, that nine hour trip, the shifter was all sloppy and the clutch was gone. I took it to a shop that was recommended to me to have those rebuilt and I yeah. got the bill and realize that I've, you know, I'm gonna have to do this myself. Yeah. <laughs> There's no yeah, way I'm gonna yeah. be able to afford to pay someone to do Figure the kind out, of right? modifications I had in mind. So I, I bought a shop manual and a dra and a jack and some some axle stands and, and figured it out. Yeah, yeah. Figured That's it out. I, I love that, dude. Yeah. Did you go through the whole motor or was it fresh? It and was kind freshly of ready? built. So I built a stand for it to sit on and I you know put a radiator and everything on and a little electronics panel so I could break the cam in and bed the cam in and everything. That was pretty cool sitting there. But because the rest of the car took so long to build, that motor sat next to my desk where I worked in, in at, at a workshop in New Zealand for 
for years. It was kind of cool because it was part of the tour when the boss, Richard Taylor, who's the best boss in the world, by the way, you know, he's always bringing people through, you know, yeah. like famous people visiting people, artists and actors and things. Yeah. This, I was one of the stops, you know, here's Aaron as the designer, you know, and he's got his motor from his car sitting there, you know, and then slowly dressing it up. It's a, pr it's a bit of a bad idea to have a designer have a motor next to his desk. I spent half my time figuring out how to... Look it out. Yeah, exactly. Stuff out. Yeah, <laughs> how I wanted it to look and, and then yeah. it just, the whole rest of the build kind of came from that. I love that it's like old school, carbureted. That's kind of the theme of the car. It's uh, everything's old heavily school modified, but yeah. it's all old school. It's carbureted, it's torsion bar, leaf spring, four speed, 15 inch wheels. Try to keep it old school, a lot of that Trans Am flavor and everything. Right. Everything's modified, everything, the whole chassis is stitch welded and reinforced and you know, custom half cage so and all So still the original chassis for the car, but. Heavily modified. Yeah. Not much of it's remaining. It's like got a new chassis rail, new inner fenders, half the firewalls new. All the sheet metal on the outside is new. The front's all fiberglass. Yeah. Really a, a lot, lot of rust man. repairs too. There's a couple of years of repairing rust in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Power wise, what does that make? It made 444 to the wheels when I first dynoed it. Uh, I pulled it apart a year and a half ago for no good reason. It kind of had a couple of little issues, but I had another car of mine blow its engine up. So my plans for this went out the window. I had to divert all my funds into that. The Porsche. The Porsche, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little different. So I just rebuilt this as it was essentially with new rings and bearings and everything like that. Right. Uh, and it was a good way to learn because I never built a motor. It was the one part of the car that I never built myself. I built the gearbox and the diff and all the parts and all the custom pieces, but yeah. I didn't build the motor itself. So I rebuilt the motor mostly as it was. It actually runs a little better. I put a thinner head gasket in. It's a little crispier. It's still got some issues, but you know, I'm, I'm waiting for it to blow up. I'm trying to blow it up. So, you know, I'm still dreaming of that new motor. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're out die, trying so, to break yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't want to die. So. so you're making that much power. What do you go to? I know you said four speed. Four Is speed, it, factory four speed. They really? 33, yeah. They're notoriously well built. They, they handle a lot of power. Yeah. I mean, this isn't a crazy high horsepower motor. I mean, sure. the one I want to build is, you know, my dream sure. is an all aluminum. And I see, I see aluminum like in America. Like, yeah. You all did aluminum. actually. I, I, I'm yeah. shocked you said it that way, actually, <laughs> I'm man. Trying, I'm trying. <laughs> all aluminum, big block, you know, aiming for like 700 pump gas horsepower. So. So now stuff like this and your inner fenders, you're not making that, you're buying that stuff, no? The inner fenders and the factory sheet metal is all the reproduction stuff you could buy. Uh huh. And it took me about five weeks or so to put it all back together. I actually rented a corner of a, a hot rod shop in New Zealand um, because I, I was struggling in my garage. It's, it was narrow, I couldn't step back and see how everything lined up and yeah. there's no yeah. true center line on a car like this. You, everything is shoddily and wonkily built from the factory. The things you find are shocking. I'm sure. So I had to, I'm you know, sure. I had five weeks kind of working full time like a nine to five at this hot rod shop while they kind of gave me some advice and helped me and do some hammer file body finishing to shave the marker lights on the rear quarters and things like that. Manual brakes on it? Yes, it had nice. hydro boost, but I didn't like the pedal feel, so I switched yep. to manual. Yeah. And all the guys who track and autocross these cars, they all run manual brakes. Hundred percent. So, Most yeah. anybody that's driving something performance based. It's yeah. A new brake setup on the front. It's got kit from All Time Racing, who do a lot of Mopar track car stuff. Okay. Circuit cars. Brakeman calipers, F4 calipers on mm -hmm. um, custom two-piece rotors and everything. Mm -hmm. So I, at the same time, I switched, you know, I did the brakes and did the manual brake boost and everything. I added a hydraulic inline drift brake. Oh, really? You know, so this, this car's built to have a lot of fun in, so that was always the plan. <laughs> uh, and what that basically told me the first time I took it out for a drive was that the rear brakes are shit. They don't, they don't do anything. So you rip the handbrake and the... Mm. Really? So, yeah, yeah. So I'm, in, I'm, I'm partway through the early stages of a, a rear brake kit now. Similar set up to the front, but adapted for the rear, but unfortunately there's no kits for that, so I'm, you know, I have to CAD something up and build it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So still all your stock geometry on suspension then, is it? Is it, it has the Hotchkiss upper control arms and uh -huh. their whole suspension, their okay. springs, all their tie rods, and the upper control arms have a relocated front pickup point for a better caster camber gain, and it has their tuned Fox shocks as well. Super cool, man. What's the, is uh, that? Power steering? It is power steering, okay. Yeah, just a breather. Fuke tank? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But pieces like the power steering pump, that's all custom CNC machined and everything. It looks super uh, bulletproof. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously you've been trying to break it for the motor, quite sure. some yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty tough. Do I notice it is Baja design lights, huh? Yeah, I have them on my truck. I love them. I love yeah. the look of them. So I've been Photoshopping these kind of headlights on for years. So it never had headlights and that was part of its look. 
So the look basically came about from, um, basically from the build taking so long. I was about four, four or five years into the build yeah. and, it was a, and I missed another summer, no burnouts, you know, so I had the motor on the stand and broken in and it had an electronics panel that ran the motor. So I figured, you know, I've got all this body work to do, all this paint work to do, all this stuff to do. In the meantime, I could put that, put the motor in the car, put the electronics panel in the car, put a seat, a windshield in, it'll drive. So yeah. I did that just to get you know fresh energy for the rest of the build. You re-inspired so a little yeah. bit, yeah, sure, man. And sure. it just looked so cool. It looked yeah. so badass. No grill, no trim, just pure everything it needed to run and nothing more. Dude, it's very Mad Max. I know you've heard that a lot. I mean, this yeah. aggressive spoiler on here. It's yeah. not pretty. There's yeah. nothing. There's actually it's all like, functional. It's there's everything. nothing pretty about your car at all. It's well, pure. Let's go drive the piss. The out Barracuda of this. itself is a very pretty car. I agree. So when you do all this stuff to it, you end up with a lovely mix of like the beauty of a Barracuda with its lines, but the brutality, the rawness of like a stripped out race car. Kind totally of agree, dude. So stuff like that. Did you make your own spoiler? No, that was okay. a guy Rylus. Uh -huh. Rylus Pro. He made these uh, ABS reproductions of the 1970 Trans Am car front spoilers. So, Got it. Yeah. Very and cool. And I'm uh, working on ducting little uh, 3D printed ducts that sit in there and run hoses to the feed you know, to cool the brakes. Cool the brakes. Uh huh. Yeah. You said you kept it 15s. Yeah. What's what's your wheel and tire setup on here? There's a 15 by 8 at the front with a custom offset and steel wheels. Had them re welded. 15 by 10 at the back. And at the moment, it's running 275 Hoosiers on all four corners. You're about roads that turn, not about roads yeah, that go yeah. straight. When I first came to the US, I bought a E36 M3, sure. 97 M3, Great car. and went to an autocross event and just fell in love. Like autocross, in my opinion, I, I love going to the track. I've had track cars go to the track. It's amazing. But yeah. there's something about autocross where you can drive as hard as you can at 10 tenths, 11 tenths the entire time, sideways into corners sideways all the way through the corners and out the whole track the whole time yeah hustling the car driving yeah you know you can't do that on the track you can't do that on the street so i figured yep. that's yep. this where i want this thing to go because that's how i why i built it is to go sideways you know out of corner you know like have a have a lot of fun so yeah, yeah. yeah. have you autocrossed this yeah. car yeah, yeah you yeah, have yeah, yeah, okay yeah. it does surprisingly well as much as i'd love to have the all aluminum big block up the front you overpowered the, for autocross right yeah perfect yeah, yeah. it'd also be 200 pounds lighter <laughs> Up the yeah. nose, so. And the setup's so cool. My buddy Dave runs these tires on his Mustang. Obviously, no tread at all. They take a minute to heat them up, and then yeah. they're sticky as all hell, yeah. you know? They look badass, too. They look great. Yeah. yeah. How about this, the spoiler? Did you build that, or is that yeah. another? You did. Mm -hmm. So is this part of your learn how to weld process? This was a more recent addition. I actually built it while I was in the States here. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had been a, a couple of years since I'd been doing any TIG welding, so Got I'd it. love to redo it. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, you need a little bit of practice, but um, Dude. you know, it's fine. As with everything, you've got plans. Like I'd like to do a 3D CAD modeled rear spoiler, something uh -huh. like probably 3D printed out of like yeah. ABS or something with a little bit of generative design in it. I've been doing a bit of that lately. I've got the similar plans for a hood tech setup. So the classic, you know, the muscle car hood tech poking through the hood or sitting on the hood. I want to do one poking through the hood. So when you remove the hood, you see it sitting in the engine bay and the stand that it will have will be generative design. So it has that organic, quality where it's the yeah. you know, computer algorithms have calculated the right amount of material in the right place. It's a very organic look. It'll be probably black ABS. So it'll look kind of like a, a growth, look kind of aggressive there. So yeah. it'll, it'll look cool. I find it actually interesting knowing what you've done for a living for such a long period of time, design. On this car, you opted to, get, not to say that, that it doesn't have design nature in it, it's all over this car, but it's that it's not the refined, over the top, beautiful, design, it's actually exactly. raw, aggressive. Function. With the work I've done in the past, is all uh, along those same lines. It's using function and yeah. I like applying the knowledge that I have. I like the idea of like informed imagination where the more you know, the further your imagination can go. You know, like I've got to build a, a, a yeah. wider base to build from. Yeah. So this car's got a lot of that in it. Like, like for example, the front end was never intended to be visible. Like I said, I, I actually had all new trim and everything to go on the car, but I fell in love with that raw look. And it turns out that the brackets that I'd made to mount the fiberglass fenders just look cool. You know? yeah. They weren't designed to be seen or anything like that, but when you saw them in the front of the car, that, you know, so yeah. that's kind of the theme of the car is, you know, form following function. But in my opinion, that often gives you the best look. If you look at a, a fighter jet, no one's sit there and gone, that's cool, this is a cool shape. It's what does its job the best. And it inherently has a, a look that we find appealing, attractive, or impressive. Just race cars in general are, are the same ethos. They, no one's designing them to look cool. They just look cool because that's what yeah. looks cool. <laughs> What's your exhaust that you do on here? It's a full custom. It's got TTI two-inch headers into three and a half-inch primaries. And uh -huh. then I uh, built an exhaust out of a stainless from their back. 
Got it. Built it myself. The car was on a rotisserie, so I could put it on its side, and I could just build the exhaust like on a wall, you know? So it was really fun. It was actually one of my favorite parts of the build was the exhaust. It's been a while since I've seen leaf springs still on a car. <laughs> yeah. But you enjoy how this car handles and drives. Yeah, it's very predictable. It's really fun at autocross. And to be honest, yeah. when I was dreaming of the build and everything, I was really impressed by the Hotchkiss Emax, you know, their Challenger, the 970 Challenger. And they were running that at autocross with their full suspension setup for Mopars. It was kicking ass, it was doing really well. And yeah. it seemed like from the reviews of people who had driven the car, it seemed like that's the kind of car that I'm aiming for. Got it's it. old school, but it handles. Yeah. I ran all their parts and it's good stuff. Oh man, this is pure race car stuff right here, dude. So you've left everything in here except for the seats and... and yeah, I kept now, Did you have seat. to redo your floor or is this still original floor It's here? like 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> this is so bitch and this is so go drive the car, right? Yeah. Do you grab it and throw this thing sideways? I mean, that was the plan. Rip Not on quite it. enough braking. No, it just let me know how the rear brakes aren't up to it. So <laughs> working on that now. So it's still stock gauge positions? Stock gauges, yeah. It's yeah. still stock gauges as well. Mm -hmm. Boy, it doesn't get more simple than this. Did you do the cage yourself mm -hmm. as well? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. And it's a half cage? Yeah, bolted into the uh, top of the C-pillar as well. <laughs> really cool, man. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with all of that stuff. It uh, really let me know what I'd want to do more of and what I don't want to do ever again. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> replacing all the sheet metal on it, not so much. Yeah. But things Fitting like the things like massaging. the roll cage, the exhaust, the custom brackets, all that stuff. Oh, you really enjoy love that. that. Love that. Yeah. yeah. Let's get some cameras in here and go go drive around Let's in this it. thing. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks yeah. a lot for coming out today, dude. It's really fun to finally meet you. Super yeah. cool. Likewise, man. We're gonna go drive, you guys. on the hood's a tall one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> was that a look you wanted for the car, is that? Uh, it was either this six-pack scoop or the, the AAR style hood. It's yeah. just that I found someone selling the fenders and the hood for a good price and they're, you know, super lightweight fiberglass parts, so I, I snapped them up. Dude, I tell you, the few minutes of driving it on the road, it is definitely raw, man. And you can tell it's a lot of the old school feel to it. So it still has the factory steering box. I was just going to ask you that about steering because that has, has a teeny little bit of play to it. Yeah, but teeny. it has a steering quickener in the column. So it's got a 1.5 to 1 steering quickener in the column. So you'll see once you start turning, it, 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 turns, it turns really well. It turns yeah. sharp, fast. The steering box is actually the single part of the car that I didn't rebuild or replace because it had no slop, no play yeah. for the whole time I bought it. It has developed a little bit now, so it does have that little bit on center, which it never used to have. Teeny though. Teeny bit, yeah. It's not, it, it's but once you're actually turning, it's fine. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. But, um, you're not having to deal with a gap no, between it's, turns. It's, yeah. You only notice it when you're trying to go straight. <laughs> yeah. And it's, like it I has, said, it's very subtle, it's not yeah. annoying. And it has, a, you know, it has zero toe, it has nearly three degrees negative camber and 275 Hoosier slicks with a lot of scrub radius. So, it, so it's gonna grab it, it, everything. It, it, it hunts, course. it moves. Of and, course, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. sure, yeah. sure. But like I said, at autocross, this thing is a lot of fun. People yeah. are really surprised. They're like, I did not expect that to like go and pull a good time, you know? Yeah. Now with it as stripped down as it is, do you, do you, have you ever weighed it? I did weigh it, it was uh, 3,200 pounds or 3,300 pounds, okay. I think. For what these are, I mean, yeah. that's not bad. Yeah, it might have been a little lighter than that. Uh, it's been a long time since I did weigh gotcha. it. Gotcha. Plus you probably got to still do the conversion from yeah, kilograms, yeah, the kilograms to pounds. Yeah. pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was 1,500 kg. I love, I love this car. This thing's bitching. Come on, bud, go. Yeah. We forgot to talk about it while we were, I guess I was so kind of looking around the car when we were doing the interview. And we left out the part that was very intentional that almost looks like it's an afterthought is how that side of the car is gray. Yeah. So kind of explain to people watching what the, what the thought was. When I bought that motor, 
and uh, and I was doing my little Photoshop renderings of how I wanted the car to look when it was running again. It was always they had the same look as the the Chrysler drag cars that they built the the '69 Dart and is a Barracuda, the Hemi, Hurst Hemi Barracuda. They were factory drag cars that you could buy from the showroom floor. And they came uh, with a primer gray body because they figured you'd be putting your own race livery on. And the nose was all fiberglass, so that was black. Right. So, but that look, that gray body and the black nose, I just always loved that look. So I wanted that look when the car was running again. I had the car matte black down one side because it just looks so good, you know, you can't beat matte black. Uh, at the time I was, modifying some like 118 scale cars and I would take a car and it had like you know the some race graphics or whatever on it and I you know on one side I would spray it all matte black and you put it on the shelf and you only see the one side at a time. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I thought I'll do that with this. I'll have it's the car is all matte black but on one side it has the primer grey just to have that same look. You know yeah. so for photos I've got two looks you know. Yeah. I know it looks like someone's hit you you know, you run out of paint, something like that, but uh, <laughs> it was always intentional. It's also a little bit of a canvas now because uh, for my 40th birthday, I rented a racetrack and we're out there doing burnouts and donuts and drifting and I popped a tire and it, the belt slapped the side of the car and it was on the side of the grave. So it's got all these scuff marks all over the side, but it's, it looks like a, it's a canvas. You know, it's a canvas for my art. I, I also like the cars that are just built like this, you built the car the way you want. Yeah. Who cares what anyone has to say about it? And at the end of the day, I, I always think if you're happy with what you've built, bitch it. That's that's all that matters. Oh, right? uh, this car was absolutely like for yeah, build what I wanted, which was in my thinking of the time back then was like the most fun car I could imagine, which was a, a muscle car because they're just the best, right? Yeah. I grew up in New Zealand. You got Mad Max influences like that. They're so you know, New Zealand loves their muscle cars. But yeah. I wanted something that had that that point and squirt kind of feeling. Like you go around yeah. the corner, you nail it. They kind of that you know Top Gear driving, like sideways a little here and there out of corners. Yeah. You know, like yeah. a real a real point and squirt kind of go car. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what I yeah, that's what yeah. I was trying to build. Whenever you can U-turn it, we'll U-turn it. Hey, you guys, you gotta love this with Aaron here, man. He wants to show you that his car is a driver, so explain to them what happened to your clutch. Because your clutch isn't gone to where you can't drive the car. No, 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 no. It's a, it's a Z-bar linkage, it's a clutch linkage. For some reason, the clutch linkage gets tight and it puts just enough pressure on the clutch so that it doesn't fully engage. And, you know, when you try and, you know, do a big burnout, it'll slip. Got it. I did that once before. I get it. And I know what it is. And yeah, uh, yeah so. Hold tight. We'll be right back. Later in the void. We're back. You guys, it's been about what a week since we were shooting. Yeah. So, what was it exactly that your linkage on your clutch tightens up, right? Which is yeah, like it done slightly it, engaging your clutch. Yeah, it had done it once before, so I knew what had happened. You don't really know what's happened until you try and like. Do a burnout with sticky tires, and then the clutch will just slip. It's a 
threaded rod. I don't know how it gets tight. It's all got a jam nut and everything. Like it's just a mechanical linkage, but it just gets a tiny bit tight. And then there's just that little bit of pressure on the clutch and it won't take full power there's like gotta, that. There's got to be a cure to it, no? It's, the car's done like four and a half thousand miles since I like built it and it's never done that before. So, um, so I don't know what it is. I tell you, man, there's always, especially when you keep a lot of the old elements, the classic elements, more prone to mild repairs on a regular basis, right? Five years of building this car with all new everything, you know, but all old school, but all new. The Hotchkiss yeah. parts, I'd reinforced and welded up the whole chassis and stitch welded the whole body and steering equipment and everything. And I drove the car and I kind of, I didn't, it's my first car build. I expected it to feel like, I guess, more modern. And no, it's, <laughs> it's still no. very much, it's just much better handling, but still an old muscle car. So, yeah. Boogies, dude. But definitely, I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, I can even feel it in the passenger seat. That's not modern. It's upgraded suspension. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's upgraded. Don't yeah, get me wrong. But it handles really well, but it's still an old muscle car. You can high, tell. Which I love, which is what I wanted, but kind of expected it to be more modern. But no, no, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. It's just a modified old muscle car. There's something charming about retaining some of the classic elements oh, yeah. of what this car once was, but still making, we did in the old car, you wouldn't have ripped it like that without hopping around and. Yeah, well, we're on, we're around corners. This thing does surprisingly well, like taking uh, a water right. crossing and it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I dig your car, dude. Yeah. I really do. I like how much Cuda's left in it. Because the yeah. Cuda body's one of, the, it is one of the sexiest oh, muscle absolutely. car bodies around. I mean, in my is, opinion, it's the, the prettiest for sure. Yeah, I put this right in there with, you know, that first gen Camaro. the oh shit oh right, shit yeah, yeah, face yeah, yeah. out of me just so you know that was well, awesome I've, I've seen that video where you had the accident and i don't yeah care, yeah but, yeah i'm surprised you're still in riding you know shotgun around in people's you cars know, it's, like it, it, it's part of why like a car like this because i don't know you i don't know how you yeah. drive a car but you tell me you autocross some driving skills there but it's <laughs> what i was gonna say yeah, 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 uh, no, I'm good. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm having fun. Well, we can go around the truck here. It's that you have a lot of miles on this car, so I know you're a driver, and it's a driver car. You yeah. know, it's 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 one of the things that makes me nervous about you know these cars that come out to shoot with us that have 100 miles on them, 50 miles on them. So yeah. Yeah, they don't have they and they have it shaken down. Do I get know. a little nervous in the passenger yeah. seat? I do, but it's also. It's fun to me, man. I enjoy it. Yeah. It's far, man. It, the torque it makes. Just now you feel just, the rear end digging for just old school. You know? Yeah, but you feel the. It feels like it digs for traction, you know, like it, it, like it throws me in my seat, dude. And then it makes me, I want to like, you should put, you know what you need? Perfect timing to say what I was going to say. You need an oh shit handle right here. You got one up there. Like oh! There. You guys see how much bigger the smile just got? <laughs> Like a bronc. Yeah, or maybe another seat like this. I don't know. But I like keeping the factory seat in there. Like, 
It does, and it's like the car from Death Proof where the driver's nice and safe, but yeah. the passenger's totally screwed. This car is 100% Death Proof. That one was well worth the wait, man. Great car. Aaron's a super cool guy. This thing obviously gets down. I love that he did this tire change at the last minute so we could go out and throw the car around and make some smoke, an absolute blast. So I wanna also mention to you guys, and I'm gonna keep mentioning, Autotopia LA podcast channel is coming soon. It'll be on YouTube and everywhere else that podcasts live. I'm gonna keep mentioning it, and when it's ready to launch, I'll let you know. You guys, thanks for hanging and watching what we do, and I will see you in the next episode. All right, man. Later. <laughs>